Hi, so I'm going to talk a bit about scary animals such as sharks, even more scary animals such as cows, and also this guy who's uh, Thomas Bayes, Reverend Thomas Bayes, who in the 1700s came up with a formula for working with probabilities. That's still really important. I work in artificial intelligence and we use Bayes' theorem to make sense of medical data, but other people also use it for controlling robotic cars. It's also at the core of anti-spam uh, filters that everyone uses. So, um, but really, anyone who works with engineering or science or measurements of any sort where there's data that has any uncertainty, then they need to quantify that uncertainty using probability, and they need to use Bayes' theorem or Bayes' rule to make sense of that probability so they can make rational decisions. Now, probability sort of seems like an easy thing. It's just a number in the range of not to one to say how likely it is that something happens. Uh, but people make a lot of errors with probability, and I think we'd like to avoid making so many errors, so I just want to show you how to avoid doing it. The main thing we do is we estimate probabilities badly. And, for example, we're all kind of scared of sharks, but one person per year in the USA gets killed by sharks, 20 people per year in the USA get killed by cows. <laughs> so we, we assign probabilities badly. This woman here told her local newspaper she was worried about the effects on her unborn child from the sound of jackhammers. <laughs> Less worried about smoking. And so <laughs> we assign probabilities. She's not the only parent who maybe assigns probabilities badly. Parents who stop their kids from walking to school and instead drive them because of imaginary threats of kidnappers. Parents who stop the kids from getting MMR vaccines um, be, uh, for, for imaginary reasons. So. What is, if people are naive about probability, what should we do? Well, we should exploit them. So here's my plan. <laughs> I'm going to rent out Croke Park, cover it with M&Ms, a layer of M&Ms. It takes about 100 million M&Ms to cover it. We'll mark one M&M with a secret mark. People pay two euro to find that secret M&M. If you find it, I'll give you half the takings. Does this seem like a good deal? You know what? It doesn't seem like a good deal. And yet, that's actually the same better odds than winning the Euro Millions. And so that's a sort of an odd thing, which is that if we turn, instead of talking about abstract probabilities, if we talk about hard numbers such as uh, M&Ms in the field, suddenly, you know, the probabilities become a little more concrete to us. So let's get back to the shark, car, sharks and the cows. Well, I, I'm a rational person, more or less. And yet, I will, will let my kids into a cow-infested field, but I won't let them into shark-infested water, even though I know about those stats. The reason is, if we break down the probability, this is Bayes' rule right here now. So the probability that's been caused by a cow is the probability of a murderous cow, multiplied by the probability of meeting cows in the first place. Uh, also divided by the probability of death, that's always one. We can apply the same thing to sharks, so what we see is really that even though individually sharks, a shark might be more inclined to kill than an individual cow, we meet a lot of cows, we don't meet a lot of sharks. So the overall death due to cows ends up being higher. So that's what Bayes' rule can help us do, factor out these things. Let's all try it, this on a more numerical example. A disease affects one in a thousand people, someone tests positive for the disease, the test is pretty accurate. Would you say that means they probably have the disease or probably not? Hands up if you think it means they probably don't have the disease. Getting a few hands there and there, and fair play to those who are risking putting up your hands. You're all right. So let's work through the numbers and figure out why. And this is kind of a useful thing uh, to, to understand. So we'll do like we did with the M&Ms. We'll just use some hard numbers. We'll take 100,000 people. Therefore, 100 of them should have the disease. The rest won't have it. We'll test everyone. Of these 100, 99 of them should end up with the disease, and the rest are lump, uh, are the, one, the other one person will not, uh, are, well, the test will be positive on one, it'll be negative on the other one incorrectly. Of these people, the test will also be incorrectly positive on 1% of them. So we get a, a thousand, more than a thousand people who test positive even though only 99 have the disease. That's about 9% risk chance of having the disease, even though the, de the test is 99% accurate. This is a lot like the sharks, really. You know, the disease is rare, even though the test is accurate, the overall chance of having the disease is low. Now, that example is one that's often used in the literature to evaluate whether people like doctors and lawyers are good at working with probabilities. And the conclusion is, no, they're not good at working with probabilities. 
And really, something between 60 and 90% of people make errors in probability. But if you can approach probability just by thinking about simple numbers and concrete numbers and breaking them down in that fashion, then you can avoid making those mistakes and end up here at the upper end of the bell curve. So thank you very much.